pastor put me on the spot. Um, I'm just thankful to God um, for as turbulent as it's been, it could have been so much worse. As I walked around the unit while I was up there, there were people that may never get out of their bed again. And although they'll say I'm, I'm facing a, a heart transplant, they say I'm a good candidate. They say that, you know, I'm strong and, and, and that all my other systems are good. And I don't feel tired. The song says I, I feel like going on. I feel like going on. And I'm thankful for um, my wife. Words cannot express. Um, days that she came up and, and spent with me and when I was discharged she, she, she got off from work and came and picked me up and um, we came home and it was good to be home um, I thank the pastor and, and, and V and Reggie and Troy and um, who else came by um, 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 Alex and Lyndon and um, still seems like I'm forgetting somebody that that came by and just and just visited, and people that called and, and people that prayed and, and and stuck with Phyllis while I was gone. There is no place like this place. There is no family like God's family. And though we may not be tired by blood, we're tired by something stronger than the blood. And that's 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 what I'm holding on to. Um, so I want to thank you all. It's good to be back here. And, uh, you know, don't tell me to slow down because I'm not going to do it. Um, just just give me a hand and, and I'll be all right. All right? God bless you. Thank you, Elder Luckett, and to my church family. Thanks so much for your prayers, for your acts of kindness. God is good. That's all I can say right now. God is good. Thank you very much. I do appreciate your prayers. What's the last count? Is it 84? 84, where um, uh, a man drove a truck up onto s sidewalk. Is it 87 now? Drove a truck up on the sidewalk, an 18-wheeler just mowing down. Just mowing down people, um, kids, grown-ups. I mean, the children as is, is young as four and five were killed. Um, 87 killed before they were able to kill him in the truck uh, an act of terrorism and then uh, the the nation of Turkey is in the midst of an upheaval you know as we speak I guess it started uh, sometime on yesterday afternoon peers the military is trying to overthrow that um, overthrow that that democratically elected government and um, you know, with the coup, either the general himself will end up running the nation, that's where dictators come from, or uh, they'll, they'll hold back and 
set up some elections and so forth. It is, uh, you know, a dangerous time. And what Turkey is located, you know, is so important to how the, the Middle East swings. Syria is right next door to it, and it's, it can't get stabilized um, to save its life. We have a few brothers and sisters in Turkey. Turkey is a country that's 98% Muslim. 98%. There's like 86 million people that live in Turkey. Um, and yeah, 98% of those are Sunni Muslims. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sunni Muslims. And of, of the Christian population, which is about maybe 1% uh, of the Christian population there in Turkey, you know, there's only two, maybe... 300 Adventists in yeah in a whole whole nation of 88 million people and uh, they are in 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 cover right now and uh, praying to stay safe and I know you'll join us in praying for your your brothers and sisters across the way amen uh, there's some dangerous some dangerous times um, right now. Um, I'm going to ask um, Sister Eleanor and Miss Suzanne if they would come to have a word just to remind you about. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to each of you. We are here to represent the Maupin Ray Scholarship Fund, which supports EL Minutes for Christian Education. And in reading this Sabbath School Quarterly, we find that it fits right in with what we are trying to do. The subject for the quarter is the role of the church in the community. And we are a part of that community. And with the things that are going on in society today, we feel the urgent need to support Christian education. Our support, of course, goes to the E.L. Minnis Junior Academy. We are praying that you would be able to support that effort so that maybe something could be done in our community through the direct and the correct leadership of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we would appreciate any donation that you might make, whether it be pennies, quarters, dollars. We take it all, and we do supply receipts for your taxes. We thank you. Blessings. Amen. Um, how many of you appreciate the ministry of gifted hands? Amen. Our young children. Amen. Amen. I've asked the, their director, Ms. Brittany Washington, to come say a word. It's in your bulletin as well. I think it's a yellow insert in your bulletin, but I know we miss those sometimes. Just wanted to say a word to you about uh, an event they have coming up next weekend. Well, good morning, church. Morning. So next week, we are having a concert called Use Me, Lord, and it's Gifted Hands hosting a concert for the local youth in um, Kentucky to come out and show their talents. So if you know anybody that, like any youth, elementary, all the way up to young adults that might enjoy a concert, bring them. It starts 7 to 9, and afterwards, there will be a bake sale. We'll be helping to raise funds so we can get uniforms. All right. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Saints, um, church board members, we have a board meeting in the morning at 10, 10 a.m. Um, just a couple things to, to deal with tomorrow, and uh, you can be on your way. So I, I ask you to carve out some time uh, for board meeting in the morning. We'll be there at 10 um, tomorrow morning. Next Sabbath is communion. Here at the temple, communion service is next Sabbath. Um, elders and deacons, blue is our color for uh, this for this quarter. Blue is the color for this quarter, and uh, I'm sure you'll hear from from uh, your departmental leaders about setup time as well as rehearsal times. But communion next Sabbath, um, the 23rd here at Magazine. You know that our constituency session for our conference is next weekend um, and in conjunction with that, of course we do have bus for you in conjunction with that you should have received, if you're a delegate to 
the constituency session, uh, you should have received a small index card. Did you get one? No? Okay, a few did. Okay, Debbie's going, Debbie, the clerk will, will uh, get you taken care of before service is over. As a matter of fact, probably while we're up greeting one another, she'll get that done. But um, if you get a card, that means we need to see, we need to get together right after church today. I need to put a couple things in your hands and uh, we'll let you be gone. So if you give me 10 minutes after church today, that's all we'll need from you if you're a delegate to the session on, on next weekend. All right, it's Kenneth Dudgeon Jr. Is he here? Where's Kenneth? I see Kyle. Where's Kenneth? Here he is. Come on up, Kenneth. As you know, Kenneth was baptized on last Sabbath. Amen. And we have for him today his certificate of baptism. Give him a good amen, everybody. Amen. I think that's all we that's all I need to share with you for now. Let's stand to our feet, shall we? Let's get ready to greet one another. Sister Burris was right up when I said, let's stand. Give us a smile. Hmm? Amen. Give us a smile, Sister Burris. Amen. Amen. Sister if I could tell if I could if I could let Sister Burris tell you her story, but cancer survivor right there, the power of God. Amen. Amen. Power of God. I want you to smile like Sister Burris is smiling. I want you to move from where you're standing with that smile on your face. Thank you, Madison. And I want you to greet one another in Jesus' name. Welcome each other to worship today.
sing. Continue to stand with us for praise and worship. I will bless your name. 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 I will
bless your name. I will bless your name. You sound good. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. I will bless. So the altar's open to you if you desire to come this morning for prayer. We'll ask everyone else in a moment to, as far as we're able, to, <clears throat> to kneel, assume a posture of prayer as we go to God together. Excellent is your name in all the earth. What a 
mighty and marvelous God you are. You, Lord, forever you are seated upon your throne and there is none like you. But Lord, it's not just that you're mighty. It's not just that you can do all things. It, it, it's, it's not that the world Yea, the planets, the galaxies are in the palm of your hand. It's not that you make sun to shine and you send the, the rain to cause our, our fields and our grass to flourish. It's not that you are way-making God. That you stop death, stop trouble in its tracks and say this far but you can come no further. We praise you for all of those things, Lord. Yes, sure we do. But God, what, 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 what causes us to, to lift our hands towards you? What causes us to open our hearts to you is that you are loving God. That you are loving God. That, just, that, that for some reason you, you set your heart upon us. You turned your eye toward us. You opened your heart to us. And you said, they are mine. It's like Uriah said, it's like a brand plucked from the burning snatched us, Lord, from, from death. And you said, you said, no, they're in my image and, and though they've been separated from me by sin, I will do what is necessary to bring them back to myself. And so when we could not come where you were, wonder of wonders, Lord. You, you sent Jesus and you came to us. For that, Lord, we're thankful. We, we, just, we just praise you that you are a loving God, that you are a kind God, that, that you're a God who's always looking out, a God who is, is always faithful to bless, a God who who protects a God who keeps his hand round about us, gives his angels charge over us, lest we dash our foot against the stone. You're a shield for us, O oh Lord, in, the, in our glory. You're the lifter of our heads. So we thank you, God, for what, not only what you have done, we thank you for what you're doing right now. Thank you for what you, for how you're acting and what you're moving in right now. Thank you, Lord, that 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 ways are being made and doors are being opened that we don't even know about, but you're doing it right now. Thank you, Lord, that that, that you've got answers that we have not even dreamed of, but but you're answering right now. Thank you, Lord, that, 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 that you made the enemy behave, that you, that you stood cancer up on his end and, and told him that, that it couldn't have Joe. And thank you, Lord, that you, you, you turned heart disease around and told it that you couldn't have Frazier. And thank you, Lord, that you, 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 you turned that situation around for, for Sister Barbara Turner and, 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 you, and, you, and you told you, you, you told it that it could not have her spine we, Lord Lord you are a God who knows just what to do and just how it needs to be done so we stand in awe of you Lord we honor your name we Thank you that you are that you are blessing God. The 
God we know you to be, Lord, is a God that others know need to know you to be. There's despair through the land. There's unrest in our nation. There's tensions and nerves afraid. Race relations are poor. Class relations are full of strife. Everybody's at each other about something, whether it's money or the color of our skin or our our income level, our, our job status. Lord, we, we need you to heal the nation. And we need you to heal our hearts. Put forgiveness where there's bitterness. Put love where there's hate. Arrest the situation, oh God, we pray. Pray for Christians over in Turkey who are hiding for their lives at this very moment, oh God. Because some think they're doing Allah a service by, by, by killing innocent people. So Lord, I, I pray that you would be their protector. Not just the Adventist Christians, but we pray for all Christians in that nation right now, Lord, who are under siege. Pray for families mourning over in Nice, France, from that tragic terror attack the other day. We pray, Lord, pray, oh God, that that, 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 that all the earth will soon realize that the only hope, the only answer for all of this to stop is for Christ to come soon. Oh God, if we're holding you up in any way, please forgive us. We beg your pardon, but Lord, then use us, compel us. Open our mouths and speak through us. Touch through our hands. And, and, and Lord, use us uh, uh, as we make ourselves available to you so that this message can go around the world. And Christ Christ can come soon. We long to see him, Lord. We, we, we long for relief here on this, on this planet. We pray, Lord, for immediate needs. Those who kneel here at this altar are kneeling because the, the issues close, dear to their hearts the issues, Lord, that they're wrestling with or that they need a breakthrough or an answer for and they've come to the right place because you're the breakthrough God. So move, God, I pray in their behalf. Honor their faith as you see them kneel here before you. Move up and down and through these pews we pray, O oh Lord, and touch the hearts of each one Speak to us about each issue that we lift up to you now, each person and loved one that we hold before you. Lord, move as only you can. When all said and done, Lord, may we see your hand move. May we, may we honor you and worship you because we've done the, the right thing with our problems and with our circumstances. We brought them to the problem solver. what you shall do we praise you and for what you are doing we give you thanks for your presence with us through the remainder of this time today we thank you Lord be pleased with what we offer you and I will say of the Lord he is my refuge my fortress he is my God and in him will I trust it's my prayer in Jesus name
better than that. Good morning. Is everybody happy to be here today? Amen. Well, uh, the Parker family, we are happy to be here today. Um, some of you may know we've been gone for about three and a half weeks. We went on a, a long cross-country trip to California, and we drove there and back in a rental vehicle. We put about 7,000 miles on the car uh, there and back. But um, it, was a, it was a wonderful journey. Um, we, we experienced a lot. We got to uh, let my daughter see um, my side of the family and members that she's never met before, even spoken to, so that was wonderful. Um, but there was a, an experience that happened there that uh, I had to come back and share uh, with my church family. Because God, uh, he moved. He moved from my family. So it's a little long, but uh, I think it's necessary to, to tell exactly how it happened. Can anybody attest to ever questioning God? And, and, and wondering why things happened to you or why he didn't answer prayer the way you wanted him to answer your prayers? Well, that happened to me. So we're driving down the highway. We got pulled over um, on 405. We're going to Laguna to visit a friend. And uh, driving down the highway, rate of traffic, rate of flow of traffic. And um, I was using my GPS to tell me how to get to the spot we need to get to. So my GPS says take exit 73. And we start to merge over, take an exit 73. And one lane at a time, and by lane three, I look in the rearview mirror and I see the police officer pulling us over. I said, oh man, Lord, please don't let me get no ticket. Please get us out of the situation. I think everybody does that when they get pulled over. But <laughs> you ain't trying to get no ticket in California. Uh, so, get pulled over, he comes into the car and he says, uh, is this a rental vehicle? I said, yeah. He says, let me see your license, registration, see the license. Oh, okay, you guys are from Kentucky? Yeah. He says, okay, um, well, I pulled you over uh, because you got out the double, double yellow lane to, to merge over. And I said, uh, okay. And he said, uh, I'm sure you have those lanes in Kentucky. And I said, well, we don't. We don't have those lanes. And uh, so, no, that's why I got over. So he says, oh, okay. And uh, goes back to his car, and as he's going to the car, I'm praying, Lord, you know, look out for a brother. <laughs> I know you got me. Let me, get, let me get a break. And so he comes back, and he's back two minutes. I look in the rearview mirror, he's coming back. I said, oh, you looked out. That was quick. You don't come back that fast if you don't get a ticket. So he's coming back with a piece of paper, and I said, it's, it's a warning. Amen. So he comes back and hands it to me, and he says, ah, well, I'm not going to get you on crossing the lane but I'm going to go ahead and write you a ticket for doing 80. And I said, okay. I'm, right then, I'm let down. Lord, what happened? Yeah, I paid my, my phone bill. I know we're communicating, Lord. I, I, know, I know you can hear me. Okay, so I take the ticket. I'm discouraged. I'm like, you didn't answer my prayer. I got my ticket. I, I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, well, it's, it's whatever. We go to Laguna. The day is what it is, and Kind of my spirits are down. So a couple days later, we, we drive up to Northern Cal, and we were visiting some friends of ours, and uh, it's Sabbath evening. We're all sitting around, and um, there's an Asian family. So Asian families love to eat and, 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 and hang out on Sabbath and just talk. So we're just sitting around talking, and one of my, little, my brothers, Jimmy, he was, he was telling about an experience when he got pulled over by police uh, on the 405 a few months back. So... He's telling the story from a different perspective. He's like, you know, <laughs> I got blessed. And I'm like, oh, let me hear your story. So he says uh, he's driving on the highway, cruise control, he gets pulled over, and the police officer comes up, and immediately he starts praying. The pullover prayer, everybody has it. So uh, the cop comes, and he says, you know, you were doing speed. He says, I don't think I was doing that, officer. I'm going to rate of traffic. I think you might have caught somebody else. He says, okay, and he goes back, and comes back with a ticket, and gives it to him. So he lifts the ticket, and he says, okay. He's still praying the whole time. And then, he took the ticket, and after he got the ticket, he said, have a nice day, officer. God bless you. 
and he continued to pray after he got the ticket. And he was saying, Lord, it's your will. I got the ticket. Thank you. Whatever. Let your will be done. I'm still trusting you. So I'm listening to him like, all right, I don't see where you got off like I got off. We both got tickets. You must not have paid your bill either. So he's driving on the highway. Five minutes later, he gets pulled over again. Cruise controls on the regular speed. He's like, how can I get pulled over? It's nighttime. I don't know what the problem is. So the cop pulls up and he walks to the window and he looks and he's the same police officer. He's like, what did I do? So the cop takes the ticket and he hands it to him and he says, God bless you too. But check this out. The ticket was the original ticket that he had written. It was the original copy. He gave it back to him. As if to say, I'm not even going to give you no ticket. There was his blessing. He was fervently faithful and praying to God to bless him. And even when he thought it was past the blessing opportunity window, he still prayed. So I'm listening to the story and I'm like, yeah, that's where I messed up. I was angry. Yeah, I got my ticket. I was angry. So I see you bless you. Okay, good looking out. All right, I got you, Lord. I see what's up. All right, cool. All right. So a couple days later, it's 4th of July. We go to my cousin's house. We're spending the 4th of July over his house. On the way there, he asked me to go get some ice for the barbecue. So he lives in South Central. Slauson, Slauson Avenue is it's the hood. It's the real deal. So that's where the 7-Eleven was where I went to go get the ice right before his house, four blocks away. I go into 7-Eleven, I get the ice, I go over to his house. Now, just a little information about how I was traveling. We, I had been working a little extra hard before the trip to make some extra money, and so I made some cash, and I put the cash away in my pocket in a PNC envelope. So I had cash for the trip to get us there, pay for food, get us home, pay for stuff while we're down there. Of course, we had some other money that was on the credit card, but the cash was, was in my pocket the entire trip. Right pocket, whatever pants I was wearing, shorts, sweatpants, it was always there. And I kind of got to a point where it was kind of like, you know, habitual, just to reach in my hand, my pocket, just to kind of feel it was there. And the whole trip, two and a half weeks, we, it's been there. So we get to the house in, 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 in um, off of Slauson, and I get a phone call and I go outside. So I'm on the telephone, and I reach my hand in my pocket, just kind of, you know, feeling for the money, and it wasn't there. Now, this is a substantial amount of money at this point. It's got to get us home. I got another week left in California. And so I, I went to the left pocket. Maybe I put it in the left. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I went to the back. It's not there. So I said, I got to go. I, I'll talk to you later. Bam. I get off the phone. I come to my wife and I said, Don, did I have, hand you the money when we got in the house? She said, no, you didn't have no money. She said, you keep the money. I'm like, I know, but it's not there. So I go to... Um, I go back to the car and I said, oh, it just fell out in the car in between the seat. You know, it happens. I go to the car and I'm praying the whole time, going back to that prayer. You know, when you when you need, you got to go to that prayer. Lord, help me find this money. I need this money. This is important. This is going to help us get home. It's not in the car. It's not in between the crack. Where's this money at? So I'm panicking. I go inside, I ask my cousin, I, when I came into the house, I greeted him and I hugged. He was in his bedroom, so I hugged and I leaned over. I said, let me check in your bedroom. Maybe it was in your, fell out in your bedroom. He's not in the bedroom. His dad's a pastor, my uncle, so I go to him and I was like, man, I, I just lost some money. A substantial amount. There's a lot of people here. I hope nobody picked it up. He's like, well, these kind of people, nah, they don't need it. They didn't pick it up. I don't think so. He said, well, what are you going to do? I don't know. Well, maybe, uh, maybe it was God's will that you lost the money. Who, who are you talking to? What's the pastor? You know, pastors are always so, so optimistic, you know. They can always see things that we don't see. Maybe it was God's will. My blinders was on because I didn't see the will. I could not see. I was, we are out of money. We got to get home. It's a lot of money. Where's your will, Lord? So I... I kind of took a lesson from my man a couple, a couple days before, keep on praying. But I don't know where this money is and I don't see your will. So are you gonna let somebody drop some money in my lap tomorrow? Because this money is gone. So I go back to 7-Eleven 
It's been 50 minutes. I go back to 7-Eleven, just trace my, my steps, pull into 7-Eleven, I'm walking, I'm like, this is Slauson. This is Los Angeles, Slauson, and money on the ground. It's not going to be there. I know it's not. I look, I'm right, it's not. I go in the store. Did anybody happen to give you an envelope with some money? No. <laughs> I was just here. I just got some ice. Do you remember me? Uh, kind of, but did anybody hand you an envelope? Let me ask you again. No. How much was it? A substantial amount. <laughs> All right. No. So I go back, head hung low. I get back to the house, finish the barbecue. I'm distraught. I have no answers. I think it's the end. And that's what we do. When we think it's the end, it's so funny because God knows something else we don't know. So we leave there, we go to another family member's house um, for the, bar for the uh, fireworks that evening. They live in a well-to-do area. Uh, as we're pulling in, we're like, goodness gracious, look at this neighborhood. Everybody's driving Bentleys, and that's their everyday car. Porsches are all over the place. And we're like, goodness gracious, my aunt and uncle, they, they, got, they, got the, they got the bread. Everybody got the bread. And we're walking in here like, man, our heads are still hanging low, hung low. And we're like, man, why does everybody have all these blessings? So we call them. Why does everybody have all this stuff and we just lost all this money? Then we start to even delve deeper and start to do this, woe is me. We pay our tithe every week. How come stuff like this happens to us? Not only are we not on their level, but we losing money, literally losing money. How is this happening? We got family members and friends, don't pay no tithe, cool on the money side. Cool. What's happening? This is real talk. And I know you guys have been through this. Questioning why this is not me. How come I ain't like them? How come I don't have it like them? I'm going to tell you why. We keep on going. We go and do the, uh, the fireworks show. And we go to bed. I wake up the next morning, first thing, and I said, I'm going back to 7-Eleven. I just want to see who got blessed with my money. Because somebody got blessed. Wasn't me, but somebody got blessed. So I go back to 7-Eleven and, and I asked the manager, it's a different guy, and I said, is there any way possible you can let me see the video from yesterday? Because it's going to show. I know I lost it over here. That's the last time I had it. I reached in there and I know I had it when I went to 7-Eleven. So he says, uh, yeah, we can go back. That's the first protocol, you don't ever take nobody back with you to the, to, the, to the videos. In security, I do security. You can't bring civilians back to, the, to watch the video camera. You have to do it yourself. But he says, come back with me. Okay, we go back. Trusting that I'm, I'm not going to rob him and everything. We sit down, we're looking at the video. He's pressing the video. What time was it? It was 4.40. Okay? 4.40 yesterday. He's a little nervous. I can tell he's nervous. He don't know what I'm going to do. And then I'm just like, okay, keep looking, keep looking. Oh, there I am. I'm coming up with the ice. And then you can kind of relax, like, okay, he's not, he's, not telling, he's not lying. He was here. I walked down. I got the ice. So this is what happens on the camera. Two bags of ice. Left hand, reach in my pocket, grab the money out, open it with my teeth, take the five out. Hand him the five with the envelope. He gives me the change back. Put the change in my left pocket, put the money in my right pocket with my left hand. But I barely put it in there. Say thank you. I walk out. Reenactment. I'm walking out the store. And I tripped. I tripped on the way out the door. Surprise. Everybody should know. I tripped coming up here one Sabbath. You all know. I tripped. And you see the envelope right down on the ground. And I'm looking at it on the camera. I said, there it is. That's the money. He's like, oh, yes. That's the money. Yes. And so we're looking. And I said, well, let's find out who got blessed. 45 minutes. Walk over, walk over, walk over, walk over, walk over. People walking over the money, walking over the money, walking over the money. Ain't nobody picking it up. It's sitting outside 7-Eleven. In Slauson, Los Angeles, South Central, nobody's picking up the money. Ain't nobody even looking down. Walking over, walking over, walking over. 45 minutes. All of a sudden, he fast forward because it's getting boring. Everybody's walking over the money. And he's fast forwarding real fast and all of a sudden the money just disappears. I said, go back. The money's gone. Somebody kicked him to the store. And he plays it back. 
right before the, the money disappears, and you see a gentleman walk in, and he walks in. And he keeps on walking. He walks in the 7-Eleven, walks up to the garbage can, throws in the garbage can, and walks away. <laughs> it was the 5 o'clock shift 7-Eleven worker cleaning up his store. He saw the trash and picked it up and threw it away. Didn't even glance at it, didn't even see what it was. It was in a white envelope with orange on it. it looked, you know, they don't even have PNC down there, so he didn't recognize it was a bank money. And he threw it away in the garbage can by the coffee. So the man says, you are in business. We're going to find your money. Are you willing to go into the trash? Absolutely. Yes, I am. So watch this. We go out to the trash and he says, I threw that, that garbage away early this morning. Okay. So you got the big black trash bags and you have the little see-through clear ones. The little see-through clear ones are in the small bags. They collect them all and they put them in the big black bag and throw it away. So we go to the back. I'm thinking it's right there on top. He says, oh no, it's going to be low. He said, because I threw away all the trash today. And so I get some gloves and I'm digging through. And he says, no, no, not that one, that one. No, no, not that one, lower. It's the first bag in the garbage can at the bottom. Watch God. Humility time. I'm in the dumpster. In my feet like this. I'm all the way in the dumpster trying to get this bag. And at that instance, I realized, I said, you know what? People do this every day. Just to find five cents. Just to find a croissant. A old cup of coffee. A half smoked cigarette. Every day. They ain't even looking for the money that I was looking for, that I knew was there. They're looking to hope to find something. I knew something was in there. So I'm climbing over and I pull the bag and I open it up. And I start tearing the small bags open to find them. I can't find nothing. One bag, two bags, three bags, four, five. All of them, I haven't found anything. Okay, what happened? Lord, what's going on? I just went through all the bags. There's nothing else in here. And the man goes inside. Let me go inside and look at the camera. Double check. I know I saw, you saw, we saw a good thrown away. So I stopped and I said, man, Lord, what are you doing? What are you showing me? Where is this money? He said, take your time and check that bag one more time. So, I dug in the bag. The PNC orange is the exact same color as hazelnut creamer. <laughs> the, 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 the plastic hazelnut container, exact same color orange. So it was camouflaged in there, and plus it was wet and it was stuck against the bag, flat against the bag. And as I looked a little closer, there it is, perfectly folded over in the bottom of the bag. At that moment is when I realized what was really going on. It ain't about what everybody else has. It ain't even about what you have. Be thankful for whatever it is. For your five dollars, for your five cents, for your five thousand dollars, for no dollars, for your bills being paid, for your lights being on, for your roof over your head, for your wife and for your daughter, for the clothes on your back, for your water that's turned on, for the pain that you feel in your body to let you know that you're alive. Be thankful for whatever it is. And if you are as thankful as I am, come on, meet me down here.
not some of the time, not most of the time, not half time, but all, all, all the time. Bow your heads with me as we pray this morning. Lord God, we thank you for the testimony, Lord God, for the reminder that no matter what we have, Lord God, we are okay because we have you. And you are good all the time, Lord, despite us, despite what we do, despite how we look, despite how we act, God, you are still good. So we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, this chance to give back to you, Lord God, in a tangible way, just to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. And I pray this offering be used to your will, your glory, and your kingdom. In Jesus' name I do pray. What the problem?
now time to lift the morning's tithes and offerings. Deacons, you may proceed. <laughs> says in Psalm 24 that the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein, for he is founded upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. And then the Bible says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory, he shall come. And then the Bible says, who is the King of glory? Anybody know he's the Lord, strong and mighty? Anybody know the Lord that's mighty in battle? The Bible says, lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory, he shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. Yes, he is the king of glory. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And the Bible says, try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, pour out for you such a blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this offering. Lord, we pray for those who had to give and those who had not. And Lord God, again, we just ask that this go towards your will, your use, and your kingdom. But most importantly, Lord God, to glorify your name. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.
Our guest speaker, our guest speaker this morning is not a stranger to uh, Magazine Street, at least not in uh, my time here. You know, there's a radio personality who has a nephew, Tommy, and your pastor has a nephew, Van. Amen. Nephew Vandion um, is with us today. Elder Vandion Griffin and his um, uh, wife are dear to us um, personally. Van is a native of Greenville, Mississippi. I think when I first uh, met Van, he was, of all things, directing a youth choir uh, in his home church back in Ephesus, back in Greenville. But um, uh, the Lord has, has led him to uh, to walk into the calling of, of ministry on a full-time basis. He's a graduate of Oakwood um, College and of uh, our seminary at Andrews University where he holds a master's of uh, divinity degree. He, um, 10 years ago, became the youth director of youth ministries for um, South Central Conference and is, uh, as of next weekend, as uh, Elder Edmund likes to say, he'll be from that position riding off into the sunset. Uh, he, he's term limited, all of department leaders are term limited in our conference right now, so having served these two five-year terms He's uh, looking forward to see what the Lord, what else the Lord has in store or in mind for him to do. Uh, but I'm thankful that he's here to share with us today. Uh, he's on kind of a short schedule. He is headed back to um, Chattanooga for a uh, camp that's going on right now at Booker T. Washington uh, State Park. But uh, they, they made the drive over to share with us today, and I'm thankful uh, that they did. Amen. Uh, so, and if you, would, if you would, it's always good to say thank you, right? Amen. For, for 10 years of service to our young people throughout this conference, would you just join me in thanking, thanking the elder and his wife? Amen. They have a daughter, Kaylin. Kaylin still stayed back at camp. Amen. But his wife, Kim, is, uh, is right here. Would you just give greeting? Amen. Give her a hand, everyone. Sitting there next to my lovely wife. <clears throat> so the next voice you'll hear following our special music, Elder Vandion Griffin, uh, Director of Youth Ministries at South Central Conference. Thank you.
want to offend anybody. I know some of y'all love being in Louisville. 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 I don't know how you pronounce it, but some of y'all love being here, but I'm so glad that this is not home. Come on, say amen. We're just pilgrims passing through. What a joy it is to be back at Magazine. And I'm so excited and happy about uh, this opportunity to just come back and hang out with some good people here in Kentucky. I love you dearly, and I want to thank you for um, your kindness. I, uh, as my uncle said, um, for the past 10 years, we've had a great opportunity to serve young people around this conference yeah, even around the North American Division. And it's been my privilege to, to work with and to see these students move from um, teenagers to adults. Come on, say amen. Some that I started with 10 years ago now have children. It's scary. Come on, say amen. I've done a wedding. It was even more scarier. Come on, say amen. Um, it just reminds me um, that God has been good and he has been gracious and have get, has given us time. Anybody thankful for time today? Amen. Amen. Um, I want to thank uh, my wife, Kim, um, for being with me by my side, never complaining every week, packing bags and making sure that Kaylin and I had everything we need. Although we're of age, we can pack our own stuff. Come on, say amen. Uh, but we're spoiled like that. And uh, she has taken good care of us. And some well-meaning people said that I would lose my family going into the conference office. We would not survive. And I want you to know unequivocally that Kim still has a smile on her face. Come on, say amen. And we are still in love. Come on, say amen. You know, uh, Unbe, Kim recently acquired some glasses. Come on, say amen. And uh, I got scared. Come on, say amen. You know, Anthony, I said, man, this girl got glasses. She going to see who she really married to. Come on, say amen. She called me ahead of time in route home. I started praying. Can I get a witness? I said, Lord, you know I love her. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to keep her. And I don't want her to see me for who I really am. When she comes in this house, just help her to, to still be in love with this little short black man. She walked in seeing better and still in love with this little short black man. Come on, say amen. And I praise God. I'm thanking him for the glasses because I know she knows what she has now. Come on, say amen. So um, we're thankful. Um, Kaylin stayed behind at camp. We're shutting down um, tonight and sending kids home. And this completes our last assignment for this quinquennium. I see uh, Nyler and Brandon walk in. They were hanging out with us this week at camp. And uh, glad to see them. I thought I saw Amelia earlier, so I'm sure um, glad that they've had a chance to hang out with us. I won't be before you long. We're trying to shut down tonight. And I've got to get back by 8.15. Who will pray for the preacher tonight? Amen. We have our closing ceremony tonight and uh, awards, so I will just speak up, and then I'll shut up. Is that all right? John is the book. What book did I say, everybody? John is the book, chapter 5, and I want to read a few of the verses there. Uh, Isaac, you and your team can get on me later. John is the book. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. If you'll be um, kind to the short preacher and quickly stand to your feet, we will try to make this as less painful as possible. John is the book, chapter 5. And I'll start with verse 1. And if you have the King James Version of the Bible, 
it should read in this manner. And uh, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to where, everybody? Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a what, everybody? Ooh. Which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having how many porches? Five. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Of what else, everybody? Five. What else? Five. Withered, waiting for what? For an angel, verse 4 declares, went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man, somebody shout certain man, certain. was there which had an infirmity thirty and how many years? Eight. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been, uh, now, uh, been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be what everybody? Yeah. Well, the impotent man uh, answered him, Sir, I have no what? Yeah. When the water is what? Yeah. To put me into the what? Yeah. But while I am coming down, what happens? Yeah. Jesus said unto him, Rise, come on, help me read that. Take up thy bed and immediately, somebody shout immediately. The man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was a day like it is here at the Magazine Street Seventh day Adventist Church, was the Sabbath. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, for a, a few short moments, I won't be before you long, uh, for a very short moment, I want to talk under the subject, an undeserved blessing, an undeserved blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. come on, talk to them like you like them. Say, neighbor, neighbor. amen. Oh, neighbor. Uh, the, short the short preacher wants to talk about, wants to talk about an, undeserved blessing. an undeserved blessing. Look at your other neighbor and smile this time and show two of your real good teeth. Don't show all of them. Amen. If you would, just be obedient. Some of you showing everything in your mouth. Just bring it down to two and say, neighbor. Come on, say it like you're acting like Pastor Luckett in the mirror when you're trying to preach. Say, neighbor. neighbor. That's it. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Uh, the short preacher, the short preacher. Who, struggles with a little ash who struggles with a little ash on his hands, on hands. wants to talk about, to talk about. An, undeserved an undeserved blessing. Father, this is not my moment, but this is your moment. This is not my day, but this is your day. This is not my church, but this is your church. And these are not my people, but these people belong to you. And so, Lord, since you are in charge of it all, we want to hear a word from you. Speak to us and speak through us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. amen. Can, can I just be honest with everybody in this house? Come on, talk to me. Can I be honest with everybody in this house? God loves to give to his people stuff we don't deserve. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some folk in here who know what I'm talking about. God, God loves to give to his people stuff we do not deserve. I, I hear my amen crowd over here, so let me just talk to them. God, God loves to give to his people stuff we do not deserve. 
Uh, some of y'all don't believe me. So let me just share with you that last night while you were uh, in your bed and some of us didn't even have enough sense to fall on our ashy knees and pray before we got in the bed. We just jumped right on in and, and the death angel came into your bedroom on last night and it was the death angel idea to take you and I out last night. But because God loves to give to his people stuff we do not deserve, he dispatched an angel of life from glory and the angel of life from glory came into your bedroom and fought all night long with the death angel and early this Sabbath morning the angel of life won and Jesus touched you with the finger of divine love and said get up my child hey maybe I'm the only little short black man in here that's happy to be alive but I believe I got at least two or three more witnesses anybody else in this house today that's glad to be alive. If you're not ashamed, why don't you just show some sign and stand on your feet and wave your hands and, and signify, thank you, Jesus, for giving me another day. <laughs> yeah, because God loves to give. God loves to give to his people stuff we do not deserve. So, Stefan, you got up this morning and you were able to walk down the corridors of your home, open up some bedroom doors, somebody knows what I'm talking about, and find your loved ones alive as well. Based on what's going on in the world today, many of us don't even know whether or not we're going to make it back home in the evening time. And so every time we make it back home, every time we pop open our eyes, we ought to give God some praise for what he is doing. God loves to give to his people. Stuff we, you didn't have what you wanted to eat this morning, but you could open up the refrigerator door and find a little bit of soy milk. Come on, say amen out there. Walk on over to the hydrant and put a little water with it to stretch it. Come on, say amen out there. That's because God loves to give his people stuff we do not deserve. Somebody was like me, and you needed a nice little outfit, and, and you, you don't have a whole lot of money, and, and so you didn't go to Saks Fifth. Come on, say amen. Uh, you didn't even go to Macy's. Well, you went to Macy's, but you were just looking. Come on, say amen out there. But you knew what you could afford was found in TJ Maxx. Can I get a witness in this house? <laughs> And so Sister Branch walked on into, into TJ Maxx and you found the nice outfit that you thought you could afford and walked on over to the counter saying, I know I can pay for this. And, and when they rung it up, it was cheaper than what was advertised on the side. God loves to give to his people stuff we do not deserve. Some of us got cars that we're driving and we can't even pronounce the name of the car. It's a Lexus and you thanking God for your letters. Come on, say amen out there. God loves it. And even if you don't have those high-priced cars and those kind of things, you're just thankful that you got a car. Anybody know what I'm talking about? May have some bald tires on that thing. And the muffler may be a little loud. And I jumped into my little car with 219,000 miles on it. And if you lean on it too hard, it'll stop running on you. Come on, say amen. But I got it in faith anyhow. Drove it all the way from Chattanooga to, uh, to Louisville, Kentucky. And it ain't putting me down yet. Check engine light blaring in my face. But because I know God loves to give to his people. Stuff we do not deserve. I'm thankful for the little car. Anybody thankful for the little car that you have? God loves, uh, I won't be much longer, I got to get out of here, to give to his people stuff we do not deserve. Can you see him now? The text says that he's making his way on up to Jerusalem. 
And the Bible says in the opening verses that he's making his way there because there's some feast days that are taking place. Uh, and and the, uh, the, the scripture says that he's there headed towards the feast days. If you would study this in context, you would discover that uh, any time there was a feast day happening and any man was within a 21-mile radius. How many miles, everybody? How many miles, everybody? Any man within a 21-mile radius of any of the feast days is obligated to show up at the feast days. Uh, now, the text doesn't help us to understand whether it was a feast of tabernacles or whether it was a feast of Pentecost or whether it was a feast of Passover. Exegesis doesn't really help us. We just know that there was a feast day happening, and if there was a man within a 21-mile radius of any of the feast days, he is obligated to show up at the feast days. And so Jesus shows up out in front of the magazine Seven Day Adventist Church. Are you listening to me? But Jesus doesn't show up out of obligation. I need to just share with some folk in this house today that whenever Jesus shows up, he shows up out of love. Ah, I just need to celebrate for myself right now that Jesus never comes to my rescue out of obligation, but Jesus shows up and comes to my rescue because he loves me. Can I just help somebody in this house today who feels that they're unlovable? I'm here to tell you Jesus loves you and he never comes out of obligation. It's because he's crazy in love with us. So he shows up and outside of uh, uh, this pool lay a, the Bible says, a great multitude of, seven day, I mean, of sick people. There's some, there's some lame, advent, I mean, some lame folk there. God help me. Huh? There's, some, there's some withered advent, uh, uh, folk there. There's some halt people all kind of sick people around the pool and Jesus shows up in front of this pool be because there are all kind of sick people. Here's what I've learned that sick people attract other sick people. Oh, y'all gonna get mad at me, but I ain't gonna be here long enough for you to get mad at me. Come on, say amen. <laughs> they have, scholars say, that these sick people have been, Tiffany, around the pool so long until they begin to build shelters around the pool. They have become comfortable. They no longer wanted to get well. They just wanted to hang out around other sick people. And I found out in my church that I, I'm so in love with that we've got sick people who just like hanging around other sick people. We've got some lame folk in our church. Mm-hmm. We got some withered people in our church. <laughs> Blind people right here in our church. I'm not talking about churches down the street or churches that meet on another day. I'm talking about in this church. There's some blind people. You can tell them and show them, walk them to it, and yet they'll still say, I just don't see it. Because there are some of us who are sick and we're comfortable being sick. We don't want to get well. We're trying to find creative ways to stay comfortably sick. So Jesus, uh, man, if I were not in a hurry, I'd stay there for at least 10 more minutes. Come on, say amen. amen. Jesus hangs around this pool with all of these sick people, but then he realizes they don't want to get well. Oh, y'all know how we like to do it. We like to dance and shout when Jesus shows up. I'm losing my amen crowd, but I ain't scared of nobody in this house. Come on, say amen. <laughs> When Jesus shows up and we get the rock at our head, the blind begin to see. When Jesus shows up, the lame begin to walk. I'm here to tell you, when Jesus showed up, the blind remained blind. 
the lame remain lame, the heart remain heart, all because they didn't want to change. So Jesus moves from these sick people around the pool. And he goes to this certain man, the Bible says, this certain man who had been this way for 38 long years. Are you listening to me out there? Ah, let me hurry. Point number one that I want to share with you today is Jesus goes to this man because he got in the right position. Somebody say position. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he was in the right position. The Bible says, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. In other words, this man had finally gotten into a position of humility. And here's the challenge that I'm having with my church that I'm so much in love with just happened to be a fourth generation seven day advantage. And what I've discovered about my church is that we've got too many people in the wrong position. Oh, it's gonna get quiet, but that's all right. Trust me, I ain't scared of nobody. Come on, say amen. Wrong position, it ain't enough to just thank God that he's called you to be of service to him. Help, you, help yourself today, Griffin, I will. It ain't enough to just thank him that he's allowed you to be an elder and lead other folk in the church. Uh, no, no, I gotta be first elder. Wrong position. It, it ain't enough that God has given you an opportunity to stand up there with the praise team, with your off singing self, but yet, no, no, I don't want to just be on the praise team. I want to lead the praise team. Wrong position. <laughs> it ain't enough to just stand on the door with your nice black and white and accented red as an usher. Come on, say amen out there. No, no, you got to stand on the door with a nasty attitude and mad because they didn't ask you to be head ursher. Come on, say amen out there. Wrong position. You ought to just be thankful, thank you, Jesus, that the Lord would allow your raunchy carcass to be of service to him in his church. You ought to be thankful that you can walk into the house of the Lord as sinful as we are, and yet keep breathing, and keep living, and keep moving. Based on the stuff we've been into all week long, and yet the Lord allows us to walk our dirty selves into his presence, and he doesn't strike us dead. Anybody besides me can admit that you are a sinner saved by grace? You don't get it right every day, and yet you can walk into the house of the Lord and act like you got it right. Well, if you do that, you ought to be thankful that he allows you to serve others. Position of humility. And Ellen says, though he had been there for 38 years, he was not 38 years old. Made some, Frank made some bad decisions in his life that caused him to now be paralyzed. He's there around the pool. He finally got in a position of humility. And the moment he got in that kind of position, Jesus shows up. And you see him, Stefan? He's standing right there in front of Jesus. And, and Jesus, uh, Jesus says, he says, Will, <laughs> will thou be made whole? Can you see him, y'all? Uh, in the right position, he has the attention of Jesus. Well. It's his fault that he's like this anyhow. He made the wrong decisions. He decided to get hooked up in that relationship. He decided to take that particular move. 
And because of that, it has caused him to be by the pool, 38, in the right position. Finally, after 38 years, Jesus standing in front of him, and Jesus begins a, I don't know, what is it like to just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jesus? And Jesus gets right to the point. Are y'all hearing me today? Doesn't take a long, he knows that this boy needs to be set free. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so Jesus goes right to the heart of the matter. You're in the right position. You're, you've humbled yourself and you realize that no matter how many times you've tried to get in this pool, it ain't worked out for you. Do you want to be made whole? And here he is. He has an opportunity to answer Jesus, but instead of answering Jesus, he starts talking about his problems. Uh, Jesus, I want to, I want to get well, <laughs> but my challenge is I don't have no man if I was here on singles day come on say amen <laughs> because I ain't got time to really pick a fight come on say amen <laughs> but the reason why you don't have no man come on say amen huh because you complaining all the time without a man. Come on, say amen. And there's some good single men passing by your hips because they hear you complaining all the time. Man, she cute, but she's a complainer. Man, she fine. Let me move on. Do you want to be, I don't have a man to put me into the pool. And Jesus, because I'm in a hurry, he does not treat this man like you and I would treat each other. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because if we were trying to be a blessing to somebody, I'm talking to some real people. Don't leave me by myself. If we were trying to be a blessing to somebody and all they do is respond with negativity and complaints, anybody know what I'm talking about? Do you need a ride to the store? Well, I really need, I tell you what, find your own self a ride and find what you really need from somebody else. Y'all don't want to help me because you know I got to go. Come on, say amen. Oh, do you need 25? What I really need is 350. Well, you ain't got nothing in your bank account. It's negative. If I gave you 25, it'll put you in the positive. Come on, say amen out there. But we are so worried about having a man to do what only God can do. Come on, say amen. God is ready to be a blessing to us. And God is ready to take good care of us. God is ready to provide for our every need. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I, you know, yesterday I needed a, I, coming from camp, I needed a, a black dress shirt. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, I didn't have no money. I didn't know how I was going to get it. And I said, Lord, just give me, I, I want to wear a black shirt. And I walked into my closet as I stopped by uh, Nashville. And all I saw was my black I serve movement shirt. I wish I had some witnesses in here. It started out, Tisha, a problem from Chattanooga all the way to Nashville. I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to get this shirt. I need to do this, and I'm trying to move this around. Move. And the Lord says, move your hips on into your closet. Let me show you. I got a nice pressed black I serve movement shirt. I said, Lord, it got colors on it. It ain't going to match my tie. He says, it don't have to match your tie. You asked for a black shirt. I decided I wanted to dress up that black shirt for you. I wanted to put a few colors on it. I said, well, Lord, what about, y'all ain't listening to me. I'm just keeping it real. I said, Lord, what about if I move my coat the wrong way? People going to see it. He said, who cares? You asked me for a black shirt. I provided the black shirt. Shut your mouth. If they see it. Let them ask you, why you wearing a high-serve shirt? Well, I'm wearing it because the Lord told me to come by here and serve Magazine Street Church today. That's because God loves to give his people God.
stuff we do not deserve. In the right position. I got through them, didn't I, y'all? Come on, I got, I'm wearing my shirt. Come on. Not a lick of purple on it, but Jesus provided it. Come on, say amen. Because he's trying to give to his people the stuff we do not deserve. In the right position. Whining about his problems. I need a man to put me in the food. And Jesus is standing there looking at him like, you buffoon. I'm Jesus. You want man to do for you what only I can do for you. The blessings of the Lord are sure. Come on, say amen. Amen. And sometimes the Lord blocks people so that we can only depend on him. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> man, I've got an uncle. He's got money. Come on, say amen. Somebody say he's got money. Yeah, yeah, the boy got money. I mean, let's just keep it real. He got money, you know what I'm saying? I can't be mad. My uncle got money. And there are times when I call on my uncle, and he's a blessing to me. Now, my uncle Ken got money too. Come on, say amen out there. (laughs) But not this uncle. Come on, say amen. And so I go to him. I say, man, I need some money, man. And he's always provided for me. I mean, write checks, $1,400, $2,500, $6,000. I mean, the boy's been a blessing to me. But there are times where the Lord will block stuff so that you and I will understand that it's not man that's providing for us. <laughs> I said, Unc, I need some money. Now, y'all, I only needed $100. His response is, nephew, I ain't got no money. Now, when he says, I don't have any money, what he means, on him, he probably only has about $2,000. Are y'all listening to me? That sounds like good money for me. Come on, say amen. Amen. I just needed a hundred, and I asked him one day, I asked him the next day, and I kept on asking him, and he finally said, boy, I told you, I do not have it. Now, I know he has it, but the Holy Spirit began to speak to me, and the Spirit says, you've been leaning on your uncle, and you think that every time you call on your uncle, he's going to provide. I'm here to tell you, your uncle has not been provided for you. That's been me, and until you get down on your cross, Trusty knees and start talking to me, I'm going to block this thing. We have got to get to the point where we lean on Jesus for our blessings. Come on, say amen. amen. We've got to get to the point where we stop hating on others while they're getting their blessing. Hey, why are you mad? Because they riding good. Come on, say amen. <laughs> I mean, all of them look at them. They think they all that. They ain't saying nothing to you. Come on, say amen. amen. Now, they do think they're all that because they're Christ's children. Come on, say amen. And Christ's children ought to think that they're all that. Come on, say amen. But we mad because the Lord is blessing them when we understand that the blessings of the Lord are not just relegated to one individual. He wants to bless all of his children. He wants to give all of us stuff we do not deserve. Anybody know what I'm talking about? story was told of a a preacher who had two children and his son had done well in school. Talking about how the blessings of the Lord are for everybody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so the preacher... Uh, he came home and saw his son in the kitchen and, and his son came running up to him. It was the last day of school and he had, he had received his report card and showed his dad his report card that he had passed and he had passed with flying colors. Uh, the dad was excited. He says, Dad, you know what, man? Tomorrow I'm going to take you to Chuck E. Cheese. The little boy got so excited. Come on, say amen. He started jumping up and down. My daddy's going to take me to Chuck E. Cheese tomorrow. And so the next day came, and, and the son was down in the kitchen, and, and the son was just in the kitchen with his hands lifted up, and, and he was just thanking the Lord. He said, man, today is the day I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese with my daddy. His daddy came down the stairs and, and walked into the kitchen and saw his son in there just shouting and praising the Lord. Come on, say amen. He shouted because his daddy had promised him that this day he was taking him to Chuck E. Cheese. He said, he said, Daddy, I can't wait. Daddy said, Well, you know what? 
some things have come up. Um, I've got some meetings at the church that I've got to attend to. The son, he didn't stop. He said, Daddy, I don't care how many meetings you got. <laughs> Somebody knows what I'm talking about. You promised me yesterday you were taking me to Chuck E. Cheese. So whenever your meetings are done, I'm ready to go to Chuck E. Cheese. Daddy said, well, well, man, I don't know. It may be about four or five in the evening. He said, Daddy, I don't care what time it is. I just know we're going today. If they close one minute uh, after we get there, I don't care as long as I get in there. Hey, and so he just kept on shouting and praising the Lord. His little sister comes down the stairs and she walks into the kitchen and she sees her brother shouting and dancing. And she says, what's wrong with you? He said, today, daddy's taking me to Chuck E. Cheese. She says, really? She started shouting as well. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hey, the daddy looked at her and said, what you shouting for? I didn't promise you anything. She says, I'm shouting because you his daddy and my daddy. And if you're going to bless him, I know you're going to bless me as well. Can I tell somebody if he's blessing somebody else, you ought to just start shouting and thanking the Lord. I'm preaching to myself. You ought to say, thank you, Jesus. You pull up beside somebody. Driving their Mercedes Benz. Just lift your hands and start thanking the Lord. God, I thank you for my black Mercedes Benz S550. Why are you driving your little Toyota? Come on, say amen. Because you're his daddy and my daddy. And if you're going to bless him, I know you're in the neighborhood. And you're going to take good care of me. Because he wants to give us some stuff. I got to go. In the right position. Whining about his problems. But Jesus stays with him. Anybody here grateful that Jesus stays with us? I'm feeling you, Fred. I mean, in the midst of things not going well, I wish I just had some real Adventist Christians in this house. Things are looking bleak, dull. I mean, I pull out of the service station after filling up my car in Chattanooga, and I'm reaching for my phone because I got this little case where you know you put all your business in. So I lose the phone, I lose all of my cars, ain't no money on it, but I still want my ID. Come on, say amen out there. And I'm going down the road, reaching for my phone. Don't find it. Are y'all listening to me? Circle back around, friend. Roll up to the service station. Jump on the car, looking all around. Do not see it. Not in the crevice. That's why I was feeling you. Not under the seat. And then the Lord said, look on top of your car, the idiot. I look on top of the car, and the wallet is just stuck right there on the side of the window. Could have flown off. Somebody could have picked it up. But the Lord says, I'm going to hold this thing for you. I'm going to keep it right there, even though you ain't there. In the right position. Whining about his problems. I'm done. Come on, man. Because I'll preach till tomorrow. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. And Jesus, God, thank you, doesn't give up on him. He's not sitting there saying, with your whining self, I get tired of hearing you cry about I ain't doing this. Why y'all listening to me? And with Jesus, you know, we like to use absolutes. Jesus, you don't never bless me. Take that pious look off your face and come on, say amen anyhow. You'll never provide for me. And with that breath that he's providing for us to say the silliest things out of the mouth that he's provided for us, stays right there with us. You always make it a way out of no way for them. Well, I 
ain't nobody taking your house yet. Your life is still preserved. You always taking good care. They always get and Jesus with our winding selves stays right there with us. He says, shut your mouth. Rise. Oh, come on, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Take up your bed and walk. It doesn't make sense. I'm whining. I'm crying. I'm, I'm complaining. Rise. Take up your bed. And you'll never do. I said, get up. Go to the mailbox and flip it up. You don't ever. I said, get up. Go out to the car lot with your horrible credit. Pick out the one that you want because that's the one I've been trying to bless. You don't never. I said, go on out there and get the car. Ride in the neighborhood that you want to move into because I've been getting ready to provide. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I love giving my people stuff they do not deserve. Bones <laughs> that hadn't moved in over 38 years. Knees that hadn't bent in over 38 years. Thighs that haven't moved in 38 years. When he heard the voice of Jesus, he could not help but to respond. Y'all forgive me here, but my, my little crazy sanctified imagination would not just allow me to see this boy get up and tuck up his hymn book and Bible and say, thank you, Jesus. It just stopped me. Allow me as a sophisticated seven day advantage, like y'all are, to get up and say, Glory to his name. <laughs> I'm a seventh day Adventist, and because the Lord has provided a miracle for me. I want to say glory to your name. <laughs> I just made the other, other half of my proud man, but all y'all better hug my neck. Come on, say amen. But I just see him. Haven't moved in 38 long years. Legs have been messed up for 38 years. Life has been messed up for 38 years. Marriage has been jacked up for 38 years. Children haven't lived life for 38 years. Been dealing with a sickness for 38 years. And all of a sudden, he hears the voice of Jesus. He can't help but to rise up. He can't help but to jump up and run in place and say, thank you, Jesus. Give God some praise. If it had not been, for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I see him excited, in the right position, whining about his problems, but he realizes he's got to give God some praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together, because the Lord is good. So good that he decides to give us some stuff we don't even deserve. I ain't talking about your house now. I ain't talking about your car right now. I ain't talking about them clothes on your back now. I'm talking about he decides to give to us some grace and some mercy 
as messed up as we are, based on our language, based on our lifestyle, based on our unfaithfulness, and yet, when he should have took us out a long time ago, he extends grace and he extends mercy. I'm talking to at least seven people in this house today who know you are a recipient of the grace of God, of the mercy of God. And for that, you can't help but say, thank you, Jesus, for giving me some stuff. Bow your heads. I'm done. I gotta go back to chapter. Don't close your eyes. Keep your head up. Keep your eyes open. If I told you to bow your head and close your eyes, 90% of you wouldn't do it. Because we're just nosy like that. So keep your head up. Keep your eyes open. But tilt your head back just a little bit. And look just beyond the hills from which cometh your help. All of your help cometh from the Lord. And I know beyond the shadow of doubt there's some folk in here just like this short black man. That's a recipient of some stuff you know you don't deserve. I want to talk to you. God is looking for us to start thanking him for the stuff that he does in our lives and for the things that he's not doing in our lives. Because there are times when he says, no, it is for our own good. Today, you know you're a recipient. I'm done no, you don't deserve the stuff you have. I ain't talking about no tangible stuff. I'm talking about what he is doing in your life, keeping your heart going, keeping your eyes open, keeping your limbs moving. He's doing it because he just loves giving us stuff we don't deserve. Somebody's like that today. I want to encourage you to stand to your feet right now. I'm standing because I'm thankful. And you're standing today because you're thankful he's giving you some stuff you don't deserve. Come on, stand to your feet. Talk to him. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody ought to open their mouth and say, thank you, Lord. I don't have everything that I think I need, but I want to thank you, Lord, for what I do have. Lord, you didn't give me the job, but I want to thank you that you're giving me the tenacity to keep looking for another one. Lord, you didn't approve the car, but I want to thank you because you knew I wouldn't have enough income to pay for the car. So thank you. I just want to thank you for loving me unconditionally and giving me stuff I know I don't deserve. And then there's somebody else. Come on, Pastor. Come on, again. Somebody else in this house today. God of the ark of safety. And today you've heard the voice of the Lord. You're thankful that he's allowed you to hear his voice today. Over this loud, short preacher, you've heard the spirit of the living God talking to you. He's telling you today is your day. This is the day, July 16th, that you give him everything. You move from being a part-time lover to a full-time lover. Jesus says, I want to give you that opportunity today. It's not a matter of if you are here. The Holy Spirit has spoken very clearly to me that you are here and you just need to come out of your seat. I don't know if it's baptism, rebaptism, profession of faith. I do know this. The Spirit of the living God says you are here and you are a recipient of some stuff you don't deserve. I call you by the authority of Jesus Christ. Move out of your seat. Come on down here and shake your preacher's hand. Pastor Logan would love to be your pastor, but more importantly, God would love to be your God. Where are you? I call you right now by the authority of Jesus Christ. Scared to move? Hold your hand up. I'll come get you. It's just that important. You are a recipient of some stuff you know you don't deserve. And today the Spirit of God says, you need to join the kingdom of heaven. You need to link up with God's local church right here, the magazine church. And you need to give Christ your entire life. I call you right now. Where are you? 
call you right now. I'll wait on you. Don't look at your feet. Don't look at your hands. I want you to look at Jesus right now. God bless you. That's one. Somebody else. speaking to your daughter today. Today you're speaking to your son. And God, you know this is the part of the worship that challenges me the most. I don't mind preaching for you, but it's when we get to this point where we take your breath, we take your blood, look at you in your face, and say no! How dare we do something like that today? In the name of Jesus, move that person today to finally say yes to you. And you're here today. I hear it's about our eyes are closed. You're here today. And he has been speaking directly to you. Move out of your seat now. I'll come get you. Is that important? Wave your hand. I'll come get you. Is that important? But I know the spirit of the living God is talking to you now. My tray is up. My season is upright position. Wheels are down, this plane is landing, but before we hit the ground, somebody needs to say yes to him. You're here today. Come on, man. Come on, young man. You want your heart to be filled with praise? Say yes to the one who's giving you stuff you do not deserve. Come on, young man. Come on, young man. Come now. Father's out there. There to accept. If we die in our soul, we lost. Nobody's fault but I. Pray for the young man, the young lady. I pray for the adults whose pride would not allow them to say yes to you. You trouble them, Lord. No scary stories. No car accidents, no dreadful disease, just trouble them. And they get rest day nor night until they say yes to you. Thank you. For my uncle, thank you for our pastor, our first lady. Thank you for sending them here and the leadership they provide for the people of God as the two of them continue to immerse themselves in your spirit, surround them with others with like minds. May the church of God continue to move forward. But we thank you for giving us stuff we don't deserve. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Stay on, just remain standing, saints, remain standing. Who says amen to God's word today? Who says amen? Thankful for the word from God today. Church, say amen again. Amen. Uh, just 
as we're concluding today, I'm going to ask you to stop. Just reach across the aisle, touch somebody's hand as we, as we wrap up. We'll sing a song of blessing. If you received a card from the clerk today, it's just a little index card, some neon colored. Um, I, I need you to come right towards to these uh, first few, first three center uh, pews, please, right after service. Uh, that's, that's for delegates to constituency session next weekend. Uh, if you did not receive a card, but you know that you are a delegate, I need you to come uh, to the center pews as well because I need to put a card in your hands. In about 10 minutes of your time, if you're a constituent, a delegate for next weekend's constituency meeting, uh, don't forget board members, we'll see you in the morning at 10 a.m. Let's sing as we bless one another. Be blessed. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister.